we are live. <laughs> it's supposed to be in a key change thing, it didn't work. Um, hello, everybody. <laughs> this is an empathetic sound. Hello, everybody. How are we? Happy Wednesday. It's Wednesday. We're halfway through. It's hump day. So what's the best thing to do on hump day? No, it's not to hump. It's to have a gin and tonic. Yay! Um, which could get us into lots and lots of mischief. But with Colin from Marlow Gin in his man gin grove shed, I reckon we're going to be all right. Um, so happy Wednesday, everybody. It is, what's the date today? Oh, I don't know, like the 20th? If it's not the 20th, I've served the kids out of date food. It's 21st. <laughs> um, so tonight we're going to have a chat with our relatively new friends from Marlow Gin. Where's Marlo? Many of us may ask, um, including me. Uh, so we will find out where Marlo is. Got some pictures. I think that's an old fashioned picture of Marlo in the background here. I've already done a bit of damage to this gin. Um, we've got two to try. When I say we, I mean me and Colin, and you just get the absolute enjoyment of going, ooh, that sounds nice. I think I'll have one. So I've got my little station up, small glasses, because it's a Wednesday, as so not to knock back doubles, because putting doubles in there would be uncouth, surely, surely, surely. Right, let's chat to the man himself in his, are we calling it a gin shed, Colin? Are we calling it a gin office, a man cave? Uh, it's been called all sorts of things, but I think uh, Joffice, which is, Joffice. we can put a gin in front of anything, so it's virtually gin office, yeah. Joffice, Joffice, I have yeah. a Joffice as well. Um, good. Hello, sir. Nice to meet you properly. Finally. Hello. Hello. Absolutely. No, it's great to see you. I've obviously seen your um, your videos. And when you first tried Marlo Gin, you were also wondering about the parsnips. Now, I, I, I am still a little bit concerned about them. What what actually happened? It was Sunday lunchtime. It was Sunday lunchtime. Parsnips are controversial um, oh. because they taste lovely for apparently for adults. They taste lovely. But for six and eight year olds, bleh, bleh, no. Um, so I think the, the, the debate was probably, do we add parsnips or not? But yeah, the cook along and the gin thing has, has carried on. I made um, I made macaroni cheese with, with Dijon mustard in it yesterday. <laughs> One of the men advised me so, whilst having a gin and tonic. Um, so yes, that was my first, yeah, what a nice, what a nice way to spend a Sunday, Sunday lunch with tasting of Marlow gin. How exciting. No, it's good. I'm glad, uh, glad you enjoyed it. I did indeed. Uh, so let's tell you what, let's let's pour one and then talk about yeah. gin and you guys. Now, what we need to tell everybody is you have two. Yes. You have two to choose from. And where do you start? So let's start with the, oh, I'm looking at my pick, uh, with the blue one. Blue. Which is our signature gin, as we call it. Okay. Now, did you find out? off the matrix what the colors of the pills were red and blue and i red. think they had the, i think they had the blue one or was that the one to forget about we're going to start with the blue let's go blue right tell us evening hello everybody hello oh marlo is from Kerridge's town so you might get some cookery tips i'll take whatever advice <laughs> i can um so tell us a bit tell us a bit about this what we're drinking yeah, so this, um, it's uh, brewed citrus lead gin. Um, hopefully everyone can see as well, we've, we've won a, oh, that's it, we've won a silver award at IWSC last year. Oh, what's that um, spark thing, meaning I can't quite see? Oh, it's the reflection off your it's award. It's the reflection, that was it, which we're really pleased about. So really citrus lead gin. We use uh, fresh Persian limes in this, uh, lemongrass, and... Um, it gives it that really forward citrus flavour, and we designed this as a gin that you could sip. So straight over ice, it's a, it's a gin that uh, we feel you can drink that way. It don't have to be too brave. I know some gins, the uh, juniper comes through, and that can um, that can cause a little bit of a, a sharpness. But we think that we've blended this uh, pretty well, so you can take that neat. Why don't you give it a go? Let's see. Let's see what happens. I've never, I've never tried this one. Hmm, I wonder what it's going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> We've got small glasses as to not. Um, this has really got a lime. Like, it makes me want to have a curry. Does that sound weird? Like, I want to have a bit of spicy food with it. Is that weird? Oh, I've not, I've not had that one before. What? But, though, it's a, uh, let's see, let's see what you I think. Want, 
Nom, 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 nom. It's just, go it's got like loads going on, hasn't it? It feels yeah. like, it's got like a warm, what's the warming thing? Let's read the back, let's read the back. So it's got a little bit of cassia in. Yeah. Juniper cassia, licorice, lemongrass and lime. Very smooth, but it's not, I don't think this is like bright, I wouldn't call it zesty, I'd call it like warm and rich limey. That makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. And one of the other ingredients, you pointed out the um, the, the picture on the back. Yeah. Um, it's tricky to see, but that's um, that's Marlow Bridge in the background. Where um, is Marlo, it? So Marlow is Buckinghamshire. Uh, okay. um, so uh, near to Slough, on the um, out out west of London, M yeah. M4, <laughs> in between the M4 and the M40, if that helps in any way. But it's uh, Buckinghamshire, right on the River Thames, a beautiful town. Uh, Tom Kerridge, he's got a couple of his restaurants there locally. The Hand and Flower, uh, the Coach. Um, there's a, a, another a number of just it's it's very foody, very. Um, nice town to be around the and uh, restaurants serve marlow gin yeah, there's quite a few restaurants in town that serve marlow gin the hand and flowers have that in there also um uh, uh, well there's a place called the crafty tap room on the high street there's lots of different places that we've managed to get the gin into which we're really pleased with and because it's reopening now people are getting back out and enjoying it <laughs> So this was the first, this came first, did it? Blue blue one came first, 40, 43%. Um, juniper, cassia, licorice, lemongrass, and lime. Very smooth, slightly warming, and then citrusy, but it's it's kind of got depth and body to it. It's not, woo! No, it's <laughs> not flying off. And, and one of the other things with Marlowe, Marlowe's got Harrow and Hope as a, uh, as a vineyard. It's also got a place called the Rebellion Brewery, and part of our inspiration was, well, let, let's create a distillery in the town. And then also let's reflect some of the brewing heritage of, of Marlow, which goes back uh, tens of years. The Rebellion Brewery is comparatively new, but that's still been going uh, uh, 20 years or so. But they use East Golding's hops as part in some of their beers. And that's what we've also included within, uh, within the gin. So that adds some of the depth to it. It, this, I think this has got a slight sweetness at the start as well. Just a tiny, not not a sugary sweetness, but it's just got an ever so slight, I don't know whether it's the citrus and the smoothness, but it feels to me like it's got an ever so slight citrus to it. Mm. And then the body and then lime. Yeah, that's it. And it, it builds that way, actually. Um, some of the fun we had making this stuff. So along with a number of other craft distillers, we've, we've kind of made some awful gins before we've, we've taught ourselves. Um, we made some very beer tasting gins because we were trying to get the right balance of the hops in there. And you may think that a beer tasting gin is is a thing to go for. Certainly the ones we made for, we wanted to move away from. You, know, you kind of get that blend of, blend of spirits and beers together. But that adds a depth and a honey flavour to it, which is uh, some of the, the flavour that you're getting. Uh -huh. And then the sparkling that you get, I haven't had so much fun with lemongrass. If you just get lemongrass and then you distill that on its own, it's a bit like drinking sherbet. Really? It's a really sparkly sort of flavour to it. And that's what we've included in this as well. So that might be, because Tina's just said maybe it's the licorice, but the lemongrass, that kind of sherbet style sweetness with the licorice might be where I get the slight sweetness from. It's a very, very smooth, sippable. I could just sit here and dangerously, <laughs> dangerously. It's so easy. That's what that's what we were going for. A not a dangerous gin, but one that um, you could really could just sip and enjoy. Uh, certainly through the development time, I mean, we've learned all sorts of things through making uh, gin. And we started sort of twenty eighteen on on the journey. We launched in twenty nineteen, and we, <laughs> one of the things I discovered. And it just came to me like a bolt of lightning, and it's terrible, really. To, I, 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 I'm fully happy to admit this. Didn't realise that the, the, when it, the gin comes from the still, it's at a much higher alcoholic content. We're, we're kind of learning this as we go. So I was drinking stuff that was about 60, 70%, thinking, well, it's, it's a bit odd. 
<laughs> a couple of them and that's it you, you just stop kind of functioning for the rest of the day so it's it, it's been part of that journey has been to work out where do we cut back to so what's the abv so 43 percent, a little bit above um uh, standard gins it's kind of in that part that you can go to with craft distilleries you can kind of make it as and how you want so uh, so you've obviously got the cutting absolutely perfect because it is it is delicious. It's going to sit in that category of, oh my goodness, you've got to have it on your shelf because it's like a classic, but it's just got an edge to it. It's not a, it's not just, and I don't mean to sound, it sounds strange, but it's not just like a citrus juniper warm. It's not just, it's got a lot going on to it. I always kind of want to describe it as a circle with a slightly licorice sweetness and then a warmth and then a lime. Like that's yeah. how I had a ability to draw a picture. That's what I would do. Um, so who else is in the Marlowe team? Is this just you in your man office? Like, with a, like who else is makes up Marlowe? Is no, there a a, yeah, there's a couple of us. Uh, um, so Nick and myself, we set the uh, set the distillery up, and then we've also been joined by Vicky, and Vicky's um, uh, part of the team now. She's really helping us to, in terms of getting things moving again because uh, along with another of uh, you know a number of craft distilleries we all have other jobs that we get on with as well so we're trying to spread out the uh, the workload that we have um so at the moment we've got vicky she's helping us look at some events that we should be trying to do but also vicky helps out and nick uh, we're in there distilling as well we've just recently converted a garage a, a double garage i can't describe it as anything other than that um, it's, it's pretty much in the heart of uh, heart of Marlow on um, what's called Station Road, in a in a property called Marlow Place. Marlow Place. It's a beautiful Georgian building, and um, we're in the car park. But we uh, we spent probably six weeks converting it from a dusty old car park a uh, uh, garage. That's the word. Look, I've started already. A dusty old garage into a, a gin distillery. So we've uh, lined the roof, we've painted the floors, we've replaced doors and windows, and now it's a very nice little spot for a gin distillery. And we've got Matilda there. Matilda is our still. Matilda. Matilda, absolutely. Copper still. So yeah. um, Matilda is named after Queen Matilda, who is well. She was gifted Marlow after the end of the English Civil War by Oliver Cromwell. So that's so interesting. <laughs> I bet, I bet. I that. I bet, I bet. So that's why she's called Matilda. Yeah, absolutely. So all stills typically have some kind of designation, and they tip a designation, and that's a terrible way to call it. But you have to be able to go, this is the still number one, number two, number three. But traditionally they're given female names, and, and we just felt that Matilda again recognized Marlowe and, and, and the local surroundings. So is your distillery somewhere that people can go and visit? Have you got a shop or is that in the, is that like a plan or? So it's, it's um, what we're doing at the moment is click and collect. We're not really a shop. It's, um, I can't describe it as any more than we roll up the, the garage door. And uh, it literally is. Um, we, we've got a, a, a bar that we made ourselves that we take around to events when we, when we do events um and then we've left some windows in there so we, we've kind of separated it into half front right. half is where we store stuff so there's boxes there's pallets of bottles there's things that get in the way and then in the, in a safe way and then in the back half we've got the, the distillery itself which is where we have all the completed bottles the alcohol the still the botanicals yeah. the bottling bench and the bottling machine and such like so just to take us back to the blue one. So this the is your one. signature. Is it, is it called your signature? Is that what we call it? Yeah, we refer to it as signature, yeah. Okay. And um, what well, how do you drink this? Or what's kind of the perfect serve? Have you got any suggestions of how you like it? Because I've got a few tonics here, so I might try. Yeah, uh, do you know we it's a it's a plain tonic. There's there's two this is terrible. I'm gonna get shot because I always forget the name of it. There's the, the, the pink tonic that's got the um bitters in. That's the one. Aromatic. <laughs> Thank you. The aromatic tonic goes very well with it. Also, I think the blue one makes a very good pink gin. If you've got some Angostura bitters, you can roll that around the glass, then add the ice and the, and the gin. Um, failing that, just, a, just a, a, a low sugar tonic. And I always suggest low sugar tonics because we're all health conscious. 
we know that a lot of the calories are in the tonic. Yeah. So if we get a low sugar, low calorie tonic, we're kind of being healthy as well. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's not quite good for you, but it's not far off. And I, exactly. it, this, the gin has got such clear flavour that I don't think it needs the garnish. It, it, I, I, I kind of don't really want to put anything with it. <laughs> what, so, do you, what do you do? Or do you put lime? Yeah. So a good couple of things to go with it, actually. Fresh coriander leaf. Ooh. Take some of those, and, and it really blends well with the gin. That is a, a good mix. The other one is a thin slice of kiwi fruit. I don't think anyone has ever – they're the two answers I don't think anyone's ever given me. Like, what's your garbage? <laughs> so, kiwi – I have – weirdly, I have both of those things in, so that might be tonight's slice of kiwi fruit and yeah. not at the same time, or coriander. Coriander, absolutely. Now, um, Nick, he likes to drink it with apple because he, you know, he drops a piece of apple in, soaks up some of the alcohol. When you finish a drink, you can eat the apple. So effectively, you're getting part of your five a day and something else. It's <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, first time I've heard kiwi as well, Rachel. Right. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> oh, it's and thank you, by the way, for the 10 percent offer for Sip and Share members. That's awesome. It's awesome. We need to buy it. Everyone buy it. <laughs> um, so what's next? Um, green, 48%. I can't help but notice 48%. And look at the colour. So we've got a colour label this time in the background. All right, we're going. Yeah. Um, so the picture in the background is uh, drawn and designed by a local artist, a lady called Nicola Metcalf. Right. She does these beautiful drawings and they're all in a very distinct style. And again, what we wanted to do is reflect some of the uh, re reflect some of the character of Marlowe. So uh, she we commissioned her to do this um, this piece of work and then um, go to the label company who we used to create both labels. Again, um, they worked out how to do it with the uh, blue gin, with the signature yeah. gin and then also with the number 16. So again in a in a full bottle and you'll see i've been uh, going at this one as well in a full bottle it really magnifies it and brings it to brings it to life that's it yeah and it's got the same uh, all saints church in the background the river and some of the bridge so this one is a, a an old school picture of marlow is it yes. From, what year is that do you know or, or is it is it a recent picture i can't quite no tell. it's um I, I don't know the year that this is from but this is actually from the uh, south side of the river looking towards the north and um it's it's actually it, it doesn't look anything like that now as you kind of expect there's been um, a lot of development to the uh west of the church where there are now properties and came to the east of the church but also on the south side of the river there have been lots of developments around um properties being built there as well so i, I don't think you can actually kind of get to this uh, this same location without going into someone's garden. <laughs> um, Robin is asking, how big is each batch, or how big's the still? How many bottles do you do in a batch? No, that's a that's a great question. So for the number sixteen for the green label, mm -hmm. we uh, produce that currently in a twenty five liter still called Alice. And the reason it's named Alice is because Alice used to own Marlow Place in uh, the grounds that we're in now. So that produces somewhere between 25 to 30 bottles per yeah. run. For the Marlow gin, we get somewhere between, uh, for the signature gin, we get somewhere between 50 to 60 bottles per run. Right. And that's be is that because of the alcohol content of yes. this comes off and you dilute it more with water because that's a lower percentage? That's it. Yeah, effectively. So we um, sometimes we adjust the amount that we put in. But always what happens is we're keeping the consistency around the the ABV, the 43%, and then also the, the botanicals that we put in. So we match the botanicals with the amount of liquid we put into the still, so the combination of water and uh, alcohol, and then um, we cut that back to 43%. And it's the same for the uh, number 16 one as well. But so, so number 16, right, let me, I've got to tell everybody the botanicals in this one and read the back of it, um, because this makes every, I think this will make all of the gin lovers go, what, what? Um, we have carefully balanced grains of paradise, bitter orange peel, root ginger and almonds to form its distinctive character. Um, 
Oh, sorry, it says sophisticated spicy flavor with subtle citrus undertones. So tell us about why it's called number 16 and what the story is with this, which is, sounds quite different to the, the signature. No, absolutely. So we set out and we wanted to create a, a different gin and, and that was intentional and effectively it was to um, not, well, to differentiate away from the, from the signature gin and the I mean, it's terrible. Uh, uh, our backgrounds, Nick and I, uh, are in technology, and we still work in technology. So there's two there's two reasons I can give you for the reason it's called number sixteen. Okay. <laughs> it's it's called. I'm I'm going to leave you to decide which, and perhaps you know people will type in what they think is the real answer. And um, it, it's called number sixteen because of the sixteen tweaks and adjustments that we had to make to get that perfect recipe. Okay. Or it's called number 16 because on the Excel spreadsheet that we use, it was the 16th row. Now, I'm not going to give you a clue as to which is which, but whichever one you want to believe okay. is absolutely true. And then also, we think that we've created that, that kind of flavour profile where we've got a, a gin which is quite warming. It's got a, a subtleness to it in terms of the, uh, of, of the orange, of the citrus balance that's in there. But also it's got that slightly more forward um, juniper flavour that uh, gins tend to have. And again, that's what we wanted to try to create. So is this well, the one which is Dutch inspired? Yes, to an extent, yeah. Just that kind of method of making, yeah. Okay, okie dokie. Um, so yeah, Rachel, I'm with you. I'm going to go with Excel because I actually think that it would take you with these sorts of botanicals a lot more than 16 tweaks to get it right. I reckon there's a lot more than that that's gone into this one. Um, why did you choose 48% for this as well? Um, you've, got to, you've got to watch who your friends are. Um, <laughs> Less and, than a time. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So when we were setting out on, on a journey of, uh, to work out how, how you make gin and uh, where you go to with gin, we met up with um, a company called Gerald's Gin based down in Chichester. Again, another small batch distillery. And their gin is around that ABV strength. And it's something that I'm not saying that we've uh, we, we, we copied them, but they kind of inspired us. Yeah. They showed us that what you can do is create a gin distillery. You can teach yourself how to make gin. And it, in a way, it's kind of a, a, a nod to uh, uh, Jamie and Nicola, effectively. And Jamie and Nicola, who are from Jarrell's. Jarrell's Gin, yeah. yeah. Okay. So this one is definitely a bit more forward with the juniper. And on the, on the, I nearly said on the nose, and I hate when people, hate, hate when people say that, but it smells like, um, I can get an almondy slight sweetness, which, so it, you can almost smell the almond, I think. Yeah. Um, more juniper and then an orangey like just tiny 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 bit of orange as well it's quite different i, I want to have them both side by side now <laughs> back again but i won't do that um it's quite different to the other one how do you drink this one so we've gone from coriander and kiwi which have thrown us completely are you going to take us back to orange uh, lemon and lime or where are you, you going to send us no. a dark as well? so, again a, a plain tonic is quite good in this one but and i always like a good but um there's a very good spiced ginger and orange uh mixer that goes well with this or even um ginger ale okay. goes very well with this and it, again what it's doing is keying into the ginger keying into some of the spices that that are in there so grains of paradise cuba berries it's it's really picking up on those and personally i think that, that blends really well mm. um for garnish I don't think you can go far wrong with a Seville orange twizzle into the top here. And again, just try and get some of the uh, some of the zest into the drink. Are you a cocktail guy? You've just said Seville orange twizzle, which makes me think you've gone from spreadsheets and technology to cocktail whiz. Do you know, I, um, <laughs> Got a I, hope my, I hope my wife isn't listening. So I've, I've, I've gone out and started to make a bunch of gin cocktails now because actually some of them are really quite straightforward to make. You've got the Negroni, um, but some of them as well, they just bring in different uh, different spirits that I would never really have tried. And I've, I've really enjoyed that. But um, certainly Twizzles, I've, 
I've spent too long watching um, YouTube videos of how you make these things now. And again, <laughs> I'm just enjoying them. You don't strike me as a twizzle man, Colin, at first. At well, first but I like this. <laughs> it's just, let's try and make it look good, at least. I think it tastes good, but, uh, you know, let's try and make it look good as well. I think it, it blends it. So which out of the two, you know, it's like choosing your favourite child. We all say we can't, but secretly we can. Which out of the two, what's your go-to? And does, is it Nick, your business partner? Is it Nick? Nick, yeah, and, and Vicky. So Nick and Vicky. Okay, so yeah. who votes for what? You know, if there's a, we're only having one drink after work and we're having our own. Which one are we having and why? So now this is where we go. Um, th this is where we go cocktails again, I think. So, um, Vicky, I think, has just started to enjoy a French gimlet. And a French gimlet goes really well with, uh, oh, there we are, with the blue one. Blue. Um, it really keys into the, in, into the citrus nature of that as a gin. Um, and you add in the lime as well and the Saint Germain, shake it, tip it. Uh, t uh, over ice, tip it out, and that is just a fantastic drink, my view. But also, we've been doing quite a few um, online tastings, and other people seem to enjoy that. So, Vicky, I think I'm talking on her behalf, which is always quite dangerous, but I'm sure she'll forgive me. I think Vicky would say blue, Nick would go green. Nick, I thought he likes, would. yeah, he likes quite um, uh, 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 stronger gins. And then also that citrus uh, uh, undertone that it's got towards the end there. He quite likes that balance. And me, I'm not going to say I mix the both because that would be rude, but I probably do sometimes. What, what? Both gins in the same glass? Well, I'm not saying at the same time, but it oh, just... Right. That's an expert, isn't it? Depends where the clock is. <laughs> um uh robin oh you've teed it up perfectly robin any new gins in the pipeline what's next nice vodka we, we're looking for some nice vodkas make us a nice vodka. yeah we're currently just sticking with these two gins but yeah. let me tell you where the uh where the 16 came from there's there's plenty more offerings within that um again i i, I noticed you shared your picture of your gin shelf uh, yeah. I shared the picture of our R&D shelf, as I like to call it, and uh, really have taken some inspiration from some of the different types of gins and flavours that there are there. So um, a, a current one of mine, I'm just looking at it, it's called number 209. It's a San Francisco gin, a really nice gin, and that's something that's including cardamom. Um, so again, just this, a fairly different type of gin, and it's those types of things and mixing around with the flavours that actually we... we we enjoy and then we uh, hopefully other people enjoy the gin that we create as well haven't you got a raspberry liqueur as well you've got something else we haven't got yeah. our hands on that yet raspberry liqueur tell tell us about that so the raspberry liqueur yeah that's it keep going we um make a drink if we wanted to make a, a, a fruit gin ready okay. for for the summer so uh, it's based on our signature gin um, but what we do is we cut it back to a slightly higher ABV and then we put fresh raspberries into that. So, again, we make this from fresh raspberries. There is the option of using um, additives, but it, we don't want to do that. We want to try and keep this uh, a, a, as pure as we can to an extent. So we've created it. It's a it's 33 um, percent. Oh. So it's yeah, liqueurs, anything under 37 and a half is. Uh, yeah is where, where the gin where the gin bar is where the gin bar it looks like gin bars behind you but um so we, we created it what i did do the first couple of times that we made this was to redistill it so what happens is you get a clear gin that tastes of raspberries which actually messes with your head quite a bit yeah, it does when i see stuff like that where everyone goes what how yeah. does are you a magician yeah <laughs> <laughs> we like to think so so it's yeah it's a real uh, personally i think it's a very nice gin for a long drink so again over ice and then uh, a long measure of tonic into that i think it really kind of creates that that summery and springy type of feeling which we're just starting to come into 
And have you been at the markets? Have you been doing many markets yet? Because I bet the I bet the gins, but the, certainly the raspberry liqueur always goes down well in a market, doesn't it? Yeah, we've not we've not got out to uh, any markets as of yet. That's that's where we're hoping to get to. So again, back to the uh, Tom Carriage link to the town. There's something called Pub in the Park, which originally is in sort of May time. That's now going to be the back end of the year. And uh, the the Marlow event is the last one on. He's doing a, a small circuit as well as looking for those other events which will be around the town as well. And also some which in uh, comparatively nearby. We, we try not to spread ourselves too thin, um, but it's also trying to make sure that we give we give people the opportunity to try Marlow Gin. I like that. I like that. It's hard work, right? A market, you yeah. look at stuff and, you, you know, you've got to get it all looking nice. And, yeah, yeah. It's chatting. you've got to chat to customers all day. Absolutely, and we, um, do you know, we, we we do enjoy that part of it, but the lugging stuff. I mean, what, again, we've had to find all this stuff out. Um, those marquees, those pop-up marquees, which look lovely, yeah. they weigh a ton, <laughs> and they're big, and you're kind of lugging those things around, and it's well, what what do we do now? Well, let's try and put the thing up. So I remember it was uh, t t Christmas 2019. We were in a market in uh, Henley, so just about eight miles away from uh, from Marlow. And we, we got down there and it was daylight, but it was getting dark at about four, four o'clock. And then at 11.30 at night, and it was freezing, absolutely freezing. I got a picture of a, a little dog in a furry coat being carried because it was that cold. We're trying to put this thing down and your fingers are numb. It's all part of life's rich tapestry, apparently. Yeah. And that is, and what you've just surmised there is the reason why when people say to me, are you going to go and do sip and share events in markets? I think, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. So what's it going to be? Is it going to be tech, tech forever or gin forever? Or are we, are we just going to, are we going to continue juggling for a little while and see how they go? We're going to keep juggling. Going yeah. to keep juggling. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, um, you know, the, the, the tech side of the world is something that we uh, enjoy. The gin side of the world, again, is something that we enjoy. As uh, somebody describes it as a train set, you know, you, it's like having a new train set and you're enjoying it. But it, it is. It's the it's the creation. It's the problem solving. It's the uh, it's the it's taking it out to people and, and kind of then marking your homework for you. You know, we we like this. Do you like it? And getting that, that feedback is great. Yeah, you're not the first person to say that actually you don't appreciate as a customer, as a consumer, how excite, excited and nervous the person who's written the homework, yeah. you know, going, what do you think of this? Um, <laughs> or I'm guessing, have you been a gin drinker for a while? Have you, has this always been something you've enjoyed anyway? No, it's, it, I've been a gin drinker for a while. So it, the inspiration for setting up Marlow Gin, I mentioned you, there's a vineyard, there's a brewery there. There's a local pub there. We'd been to the brewery. We went to the local pub and we came out of the local pub with a genius idea, which was to create a gym. Um, so that it, it was all linked. <laughs> well, I think um, I think it's fair to say they're both very, very good and ones Thank that you. easy to forget how nice they are, actually. So they, we, we mustn't, we must not let people mm -hmm. forget. Um, and thank you to Sally. So Sally is one of our members that messaged me and said, you've got to go and speak to Marlo Gin, hence our Instagram conversation. So thank you so much for Sally for making this happen. Um, right then, are you, are you having a gin and tonic now? What are you have you finishing the evening with a G&T or no, start? Finish it with a G&T. I've got neat number 16, 16 tweaks and adjustments. 16 tweaks and adjustments, yeah. And I've also got my... Uh, number well a signature gin here as well so I, i'm going to finish those off and make sure that, that ends the uh and or starts the evening yeah, it's oh, well um hopefully your lovely wife knows that you're in the office and she will come and find you and you won't just be sat there drinking meat gin <laughs> see you in a few hours i mean it's a lovely evening so um, but thank you so much colin and please pass uh, my love on to nick and vicky and all the best of luck with the events and everything and thank you for introducing us to Marlo Gin. Maybe we can do maybe we could do a members tasting sometime soon as well. Perfect. Thank you very much, Kate. Oh my pleasure, my pleasure indeed. All right, thanks everybody for joining us. Have a lovely rest of your Wednesday. All right. Bye everybody. Thank you.